Brother Wayne, if you would, bless her all.
Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for another privilege to be back in his house and in his goodness. And thank the Lord for all of his many, but we're a blessed people, and sure are. We've got a lot to be thankful for, and, and um, got much to be in prayer about tonight, many that needs our prayers. And I remember my cousin's family we had her service uh, today in North Carolina, and she's 54 years old and passed away with cancer, and remember her family, and uh, I can remember... Uh, uh, Randy Trivet, he he got to come home today, and and uh, he's doing a lot better. He's been a sick boy. Uh, that gallbladder uh, uh, set up gangrene. And it could have been uh, it could have been worse than what it was, but uh, they Lord uh, Lord got him over. You know, time for them to get to it, and he had to go back in yesterday and. Uh, they had to do some more work, uh, put in, I believe it was stent in his intestines, I believe, and if I'm telling that right. And, and um, uh, so let's pray for healing. Uh, uh, let's pray that he'll, he'll heal up good. And, and um, his brother, uh, Bobby, had a heart attack, and uh, he's, uh, he had a heart surgery yesterday and, and come out and had to go right back in, uh, Clive was telling us. And, so he had two surgeries yesterday, and, and let's remember Bobby. I think he's doing better today, and, and uh, so let's, let's remember him in prayer. The uh, Lord just continue to uh, be with him, and uh, thank you for praying for my mom and dad. Uh, Dad's doing a lot better. Uh, not really sure if he got food poison or if he got a stomach virus, but he was over it uh, within a day. And, uh, and then my mom, uh, she got to go home, and uh, still kind of scratching her head of what, what, what it was, but they did rule out a heart attack. She had the symptoms of a heart attack the way she was hurting, and then she also had the symptoms of a gallbladder. So they were, uh, when they did the test, they, uh, it was neither. So uh, they did find a gallstone, but, uh, but anyway, uh, they, uh, they're saying it was muscular and, uh, in her back, and so they've given her some medicine. It seems to help, and uh, I saw her today, and she's she's doing a lot better. Appreciate you all's prayers uh, for her as well. Um, let's see here. I uh, see. I uh, remember uh, Brother Herb Cannon in prayer, and uh, talked to him today. And let's keep keep him in the prayers. Uh, Allison Tittle. Um, She's over at the Mission Hospital. I told that wrong over the weekend. I even got the text where it was at, and I read it wrong. It's at Mission Hospital in Asheville. I saw her today, and basically, what what they're doing, they've they're doing a, they've got her hooked up to the EEG, basically to check the brain waves, and they are they are monitoring her seizures. Uh, now, she's she has one sometimes more than one a day and that's what they're doing they're monitoring them trying to figure out what's causing them and, and finding the culprit so as we pray tonight let's pray for those doctors and nurses that God will just give them the the wisdom and knowledge and direction that they need and uh, to help her uh, and most of all pray for God's healing hand too amen but sometimes God chooses to heal through medicine, don't he? And uh, sometimes God chooses for us to go to the hospital. And, and uh, so that's where she's at. And um, they might have to stay four days, not really sure, but uh, she's been over there since yesterday. Uh, she did have a, a, a seizure before I got there this afternoon. So that was the first one that picked up. And they, they, they want to see one. So... Uh, and they, um, but she's going through a lot of tests and uh, a lot of things make her sick, uh, different things they're doing. So let's pray. She's uh, 16 years old and uh, she's been through a lot just here lately uh, with her heart. And I think her heart's doing okay now. And then now uh, she's having seizures uh, just uh, sometimes more than once a day, multiple ones. So let's pray for uh, her as well as. Uh, Joel and Teresa as well, and Miss Nancy. 
All right. Anybody have a spoken of request? Anybody else? Jeannie, you're my cousin. Uh, Jeannie's daughter is Sally Sure are. Yes. There's so many people I don't even know what to say. I don't see it as put in a special class for all Yes. Just remember Russell. All right, I spoke for requests and lifting the hand. I saw Ken and Will come around the altar tonight. Miss Marsh Robinson to uh, lead some prayer. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, today God has given us. Thank you, Lord. God, we Lord, have you to look to the offer and the finish of our faith. I pray, God, tonight, Lord, that you just give us exactly what we stand in need of. Lord, we're nothing without you. Lord, we just pray, God, that you give us every word and every thought, Lord, I pray. We pray, God, that you just uh, give God that, that that is needed. We pray, Lord, that you be with all these that are here, except for Andy, and Russell, Allison, Lord, and Pepper. I pray, God, that you just lead God and direct the doctor's hands, I pray. Amen. Anybody got a song or a testimony in your heart?
good to have all of our visitors with us tonight and each one good to see Jackie and Elizabeth with us and, and the Lord's really done a work in Jackie's life good. thank the Lord for being him he was a sick sick man a few months ago and good to see him with us and, uh, others are in the back good to see you and coming with be with us and and uh, our friends from uh, Florida so they're back with us tonight and Got to know them a little better, so I'm just going to introduce you all to our church. This is uh, Pastor Jeff uh, Stafford and his wife. He pastors the church in, uh, in, in Jacksonville, Florida. They're up here on vacation, and uh, we're just tickled to death that they chose to stop in and, and, uh, and worship with us. Oh, he sure will. Oh, he sure will. Well, you're, well, you're welcome. Anytime you're back up this way, y'all welcome to come and worship with us again. Amen. Amen. I, I like to meet uh, more of my brothers and sisters in Christ along this way. I, that's what I told them over to Revival last week. I just met more of my brothers and sisters in Christ that I didn't know, but I, I know now. And, uh, and so uh, thankful. Thankful for that. All right. Anything else? Turn with us in Second Corinthians. Chapter number six. And I'll tell you, I've, I've had this on my mind today, and and so I'm I'm kind of going to pick up where I left off from the the uh, funeral uh, is, is when I got in a truck after the funeral and going to the hospital to visit and just seeking the Lord's will it seemed like it's just more more scripture and and um, and uh, to this and the Lord's laid it on her heart today about rejoicing and uh, there's some several scriptures here we're going to be a jumping around but I'm going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, and, and uh, you can stand uh, here. We'll, we'll read this one passage, and we'll pray. And you can be seated, and we, we might read some more here. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, and in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost. I say amen to that. By love unfeigned. There's no way you can do all this without the Holy Ghost. Amen. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and, and good report as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live and chasten not, and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as nothing yet possessing all things. I'll stop right there. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. And Lord, I, I pray, God, tonight, God, that you would just uh, clear our minds and our hearts and help us, Lord, to give ear to the Word of God. And Lord, you know exactly what needs to be said and what needs to be heard. And Lord, I pray that you'd remove any hindrance from being my life would hinder your Word being preached and the demonstration of the power and the Spirit of God tonight. And Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, as I read you here, Paul was talking about the 
sufferings are in the ministry. And uh, he said in another place, so I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. But Paul mentioned uh, of all the things that he went through. But he said in all things, according uh, 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 proven ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, then he went on to say, in scribes and in prisons and tumults and labors and watchings, fastings. Now, Paul's ministry was nothing easy, was it? I mean, from the day he got saved, there's a target on his back. They wanted to get rid of him. A lot of them were skeptical of him because this was the man that persecuted the Christians. So even the church uh, had a hard time grabbing hold of him, didn't he? Uh, but uh, when they saw the... Holy Ghost upon him, and they saw the change. Uh, see, that's a, that's, a, that's a big turnaround. Amen. When there's a change, uh, amen, uh, uh, you, you know that you've been passed from death and life. The Bible says, seeing you love the brethren, you've got the agape love in you. That's the God, God's uh, unconditional love. And you've got the love of God in your heart, and there'll be a change. And you've heard me preach on this many a time. If they've never been a change, you've never been saved. No matter what you claim to be, no matter how, how long that you've went to church, if they've never been a change, friend, you're lost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's how I know I'm saved. That's, that's really the ground that I've stood on since 1986. It, it wasn't necessarily the prayer I prayed I've been hinging on. Because I don't even remember what I prayed. It's not uh, really who prayed with me. And it's not the, the day that I prayed, but it's the change. That's what I go back to, and that's what I'm standing on, because I know I've been changed. The next day after I got saved, that was the day, first time I ever remember the devil even really speaking to me. And he said, you didn't get saved last night. And at six years old, I spoke out. There wasn't nobody around me. But I said it out loud. I said, if I didn't get saved, why do I feel so much better? I didn't understand a lot, but I understood I was changed. So when the devil tries, and, and listen, you've got to, the Bible says, make your call and election sure. Amen? Knowing, uh, knowing that, that you're saved, you're one of God's elect, that you're one of God's children. Amen? And, and when you know that, you've got ground to stand on. Because the devil will try to make you doubt every decision you've ever made. Uh, but when you uh, uh, really uh, uh, know that you've been saved, you've got ground to stand on and ground to rejoice. So Paul was talking about all these things, uh, uh, proving ourselves and, 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 and basically all these sufferings. And then he said, by, we're proving ourselves by the pureness of not, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by faith, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown, yet well known, as dying, and behold we live, and chasten not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, and having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Now you think about it. Of all the things that we face in our Christian life, you say, well, Paul was speaking about the ministry. Friend, if you're saved, amen, you're in the ministry. Yeah, amen. It's, it's God's will that you let your light shine. Amen. There's some uh, pastors, some evangelists, some teachers, uh, 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 some uh, uh, lay members or whatever, but we're all the part of the body of Christ. Amen. So, he was speaking of all this suffering, what I'm getting at tonight, all the sufferings and all the things that he faced. Sounds pretty rough, don't it? Sounds like pretty rough life if you, if you read all of it. But he said, but rejoicing. Now, you think about it, and, and, and as he said there, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing. That's the meekness 
That's not being prideful. That's being meekness, right? Being humble that the Lord to be lifted up. Now, Hebrews chapter number 3, I'm going to read just a little bit of this. Verse number 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as Moses was faithful to all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. I say amen to that. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant uh, for a testimony of those things which are to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Now, I begin to think about rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. And rejoicing. It's been on my mind. Uh, My cousin that passed away, 54 years old, she passed away with cancer. And the last time I saw her was a little over a month ago in our revival. She sat uh, uh, back toward the back a little bit and she testified before the service was out. She gave God glory. Uh, she was battling cancer. She probably, uh, if, if going off feelings, she should have been probably at home in bed. But she chose to come to the house of God. And she testified and was giving God honor and praise. Now, she just didn't do that here, but she lived a life of rejoicing. She would shout the praises of God and people would say you know uh, even the preacher over there today said you know uh, uh, there's there's people say well well the younger generation's not a shouting generation well no uh, you couldn't say that in her generation because she did and she didn't care uh, it wasn't for a show by all means amen she was rejoicing in the Lord now listen God wants us to rejoice amen, amen? And you don't hear a lot of people rejoicing. And I believe there's a lot of reasons why people don't rejoice. First of all, if you're, if you're straddling the fence, amen, uh, uh, number one, let me say this, uh, you've got to have something to be rejoicing about. You've got to have joy in order to rejoice. Lost people don't have joy. And, and, and let me say tonight, there's people sitting at the house of God a lot of people and, and been sitting for years. And the reason why they don't have joy is because some of them ain't saved. Amen. That's not me to judge. God's the righteous judge. Uh, but friend, if you don't know you're saved, you can't rejoice in anything. Amen. Amen. And get that taken care of. You got joy in your heart. And when you got joy in your heart, you don't have to make yourself rejoice. It'll come out, won't it? But I begin to think there's a lot of people might not have joy because of circumstance. And your circumstance does not have to dictate whether you are rejoicing or not. Amen. Amen. I, and I, I'm speaking by experience tonight. There's been times in my life I thought to myself, well, there's no way I can rejoice in the Lord of, uh, of going through the struggle and going through the pain. Uh, but when God, the Holy Ghost, uh, gives you a pick-me-up, uh, no matter in the valley, no matter how low you've been through the week, have you ever done that? It, it, you've had the awfulest week ever was, and maybe months ever was, or a year that's ever been that you've ever experienced. Uh, but when you come to the house of God, the Holy Spirit of God breathes on you. And when the Holy Ghost breathes on you, He gives you some life. And that life is joy. And you begin to praise. And you begin to worship God. What Job do the day everything fell apart in his life? He went and sat in sackcloth and ashes and he worshiped God. Where did him ashes come from? That's the last time that he had met and communed with God. So in other words, he was rubbing himself with yesterday's blessings. 
Amen. It might be dark in your life, but you need to go back to the last time that God communed with you, that God met with you. Hey, I'm still rejoicing over Tuesday night at a revival, ain't you? I'm still eating off of that. Amen. We need to rub ourselves with yesterday's blessings. Amen. That'll cause you to rejoice. Amen. You say, well, that's just not my nature to rejoice. It ain't your sinful nature to rejoice, but it's your new nature. Amen. You've got his nature in you when he saved you. Amen. We get full of ourselves sometimes, and we get full of ourselves, we'll get boastful, won't we? Amen. Boastful within ourselves, and I have nothing to brag about myself about. Amen. All I can say about myself, I've got myself in a lot of messes. Amen. The Bible even says, not that we're sufficient to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen. So any, any kind of boasting, we've got everything to brag on the Lord about. And, I, and another reason why I think a lot of people that are not rejoicing in the Lord, I feel like, and I have felt this way in my Christian life, I felt like that I wasn't good enough. Man, it's quiet, but hey, it's the truth, ain't it? I believe the devil talked to us and all of us. Well, you, what have you done to rejoice? It's not what I've done that's causing me to rejoice. It's what he's done. It's not because I'm better than anybody or I've done everything right. But it's because He's done everything right. Amen. Amen. He's done everything right. It ain't about me. You get up to praise the Lord and it's about you. About you. The Spirit of God won't honor it, will He? Amen. Uh, but you begin to lift him up. Amen. He said, if I'd be lifted up, I'd draw all men into me. And he needs God's people lifting him up. Amen. You brag on the Lord, people want what you've got. You start bragging on yourself, people won't want what you've got. Amen. You, keep, you, you start murmuring and complaining, people won't want what you've got. Amen. The commandments of God is not, is not grievous. Amen. But there's joy in the Lord. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Listen tonight. I believe God wants us to be joyous. God wants us to rejoice. Think about Psalms 100. That one right there is a good one. Where he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. A joyful noise. What, what is a joyful noise? Rejoicing. Rejoicing. He said, all ye lands. That's everybody. That's everything that hath breath. Hey man, you got breath, you praise the Lord. And, and here's the thing. If we don't give him praise, he, he could call for the rocks and the mountains to... To, to, to pray. And I, I don't want them doing my praise. Amen. But it goes on to say, serve you, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. With gladness. It's hard to rejoice when you ain't glad. Amen. I looked up the word to rejoice. Let's look at that real quick here. Let's see here. The word rejoice to experience joy and gladness in a high degree. You've never experienced anything like salvation. Amen. We've never been as free as we have than the day that Jesus saved us. Amen. And we've never been as happy as we were the day we got saved and since. Amen. So we must... We've got something to be glad about. You know, uh, they sung a song over at the funeral day that uh, the God on the mountain. Life is easy when it's up on the mountain. And you, 
You know, you, you talk of faith when, when you're up on the mountain, but it's down in the valley of trials and tribulations. That's when faith is really put to the test. But here's the thing, a lot of times, a lot of times we don't, we don't look at it that way. We think, well, because I'm going through that, I can't have joy. See, that's where you let the devil lie you again. We allow the devil to lie us a lot of times and take away nuggets of joy. Then we can really be joy in the Lord. And I'm speaking by experience. I mean, I'm not telling you something. I, I have experienced joy when I'm hit rock bottom. I've experienced and know what it's like to be rejoicing. God's brought me through in, in, in times in my life that, that I didn't know anything else, but I knew I was saved and I was rejoicing. You read Job's, Job's life down through there. He rejoiced that he is saved. He didn't understand why the things happened to him. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth and I'll see him in the latter days. He was taking a, a joy in his salvation. He was rejoicing that, hey, you know what I was thinking of this. We need to rejoice because we're saved. Amen. Uh, Psalms 9, in uh, last part of Psalms 9, 14. I'll read the whole verse. That I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. So you've got, you've got to say so. Amen. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're saved, you've got to say so. Amen? And, and whatever reason why you're not rejoicing, I pray tonight God will kindle a fire under all of us to rejoice. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. You know what it does when you rejoice? It takes your mind off your problems and on God. Amen? Amen? And what you're really doing in the whole meantime is saying the good is outweighing the bad. Amen. But how many times we're so overwhelmed with the bad going on and the wrong going on in our life and we're overlooking the right. We're overlooking the blessings of God. Amen. We're stepping over the blessings and we're picking up the, the, the bad and the, and the things that's going on. You and I have a choice every day whether we're going to allow the Lord and, uh, to, to, to bless us or we're going to get overwhelmed with the things that we, that, that, that we encounter every day. And David even said that too. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We all get overwhelmed, man. But when we rejoice... And I've said this before, when you know you're saved, that'll get you through everything in your life. Man, because there's times you'll be questioned that you're even saved. You'll be questioned, you'll question every decision you've ever made in your life. I've seen a lot of people, I've visited a lot of people dying on their deathbed, and that's what they do a lot. Really, that's, that's what a lot of people do is sit and they, they, they go through every decision they've made in life and they question everything. And the devil loves to just jump on board, don't he now? But when they get to the part of you don't know you're saved. I've shared this many times. Burl Stallard was 91 or 92 year old. That was V. Hensley's sister. She sat on the second seat from the front. And she came one Sunday morning, not long before she died. And I prayed with her, and she got up, and she said, Preacher, the devil still tries to make me doubt my salvation. I said, What do you do? She said, I come and do what I just did. And then I say, I know better than that. Right? Yeah. Amen. You know how to put the devil in his place. Yeah. Amen. Take Jesus' example. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Then you can rejoice. My daddy said this for years. If you want the devil to quit riding you, take the saddle off. Don't that make sense? We give him a place to ride us, don't we? We give him a place to depression and discouragement. We can choose to stay there. But we've got to take the saddle off and say, No more. I'm getting up and I'm claiming victory today. 
Even though my situation has not gotten any better, my prayer ain't answered yet, but I'm still going to praise Him. And I'm still going to thank Him. So thank the Lord and praise Him for salvation. Rejoice because you're saved. Rejoice because you've got a friend that's thicker closer than any brother. Amen. The Bible says it's better to put your confidence in God than in man. When you, you, you've got a friend that won't leave you, won't forsake you. Sometimes the best friend in this world will turn their back on you. You'll think they're friends and they'll turn their back. But listen, he's a friend. They'll never do that. So that's something else to rejoice in. I thought of this. Rejoice that you're not alone. There's a lot of people in our church who are, are widows and widowers. It's a lonely life. Being married to somebody for a long time. But ain't you glad you got the Lord? Amen. Ain't you glad you've got Jesus? Amen. Ain't you glad, surely, that, that, that you're not alone? A lot of others in our church, it's widows and widowers. You're, you're not alone. You have the Lord. There's time, and uh, you know, that where they, you might be afraid. But I think about what the Word of God says. What time I'm afraid, I'll put my trust in thee. Man, and, and, and I thought of this. Ain't you glad that you can rejoice that it ain't always going to be this way? We've got heaven to look forward to. I'm glad that I could say because of the death and the burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I'm glad I could look at that 15, 16-year-old little girl and whatever Matthew is in his 20s, and that husband, I'm glad I could look at them and say, because of Jesus dying and rose at the third day, it ain't always going to be this way. So we can rejoice today. So whatever you're facing, whatever the struggle, maybe you, you feel like that just, just you don't know how much more you can take, that's a good time to rejoice. You say, in what? It ain't always going to be this way. I think of so many times of scriptures. There's a scripture for everything that you're facing. Romans 15, 4, for whatsoever is written aforetime, we're written through, for our learning that we, through patience and comforts of the scriptures, might have hope. When you feel overwhelmed, get your Bible out and read God's Word. Amen? God will help you. God will strengthen you. God will give you your song back. How many times have we let things, we've let the devil rob us, we've let him take our song. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? We've let him take our song. We hadn't sung victory in Jesus honestly in a long time. Are you with me? We sing about victory in Jesus, but are we meaning it? Are we claiming victory? Because we do have victory. We've got victory over death, hell, and the grave because Jesus overcome it for us, right? But he's given us victory to live. Not only am I going to go to heaven and enjoy the victory that's in Jesus Christ when I die, but he's given me victory now that I can rejoice. God wants you to enjoy your salvation. Are you? Man, are you? Then, if you're not tonight, then what's the culprit? By what reason are you not rejoicing? Every time that I've asked myself that question, every time that I've dug the person Who's at fault is the one that I look in the mirror every day. A lot of times I tried to blame the devil. Let me tell you your worst enemy. It's the one you look in the mirror at every day. I am my worst enemy. I am the one. I've let this hinder me a lot. This gets in the way. This hinders me from praising God like I want to. Paul said it good right there in, in Romans 7. You know, the struggle that's within. 
Romans 7, what did he say there? He said, for that which I, I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, I, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent it with all that it is good. It is uh, then... Uh, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This gets in the way. Amen? This right here gets in the way. This hinders me. But when I mortify my members, when I put them behind me, that I may please that and yield myself unto righteousness instead of unrighteousness, I'll be able to praise Him and rejoice. Amen. God is not impressed of how loud you rejoice, of how you go about rejoicing. He's not impressed of, of if you get up and how loud you can shout or how, how uh, much you run. All that's in vain if it's not from the heart. He'll honor it if it's from the heart. But it's for a show, and he won't be in it, man. And I know, I believe another reason why we don't rejoice is the devil will say, well, so-and-so will, will critique you and say, well, now, is, is that a God, or are they doing that for God, or are they doing that? Well, what about them? What do they think they're doing? They're crazy. We worry about what people think. If it comes from the heart, God knows your heart. And that's all that matters. Amen. Man, I, I will never forget this revival we just come through. I rejoiced more in that revival than I ever have, I believe. And, 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 and I'll tell you, it wasn't because that I thought I was worthy or because that I that I felt like that, that I deserved the blessings of God. But in this revival, it made me realize that I have grounds to rejoice. The devil loves to tell me and loves to tell you, you don't have grounds to rejoice. But the grounds that I'm rejoicing on, the blood's paid for. Amen! Amen. The ground that I'm rejoicing on, listen, is what Jesus said is the rock. And he said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So them grounds are grounds to rejoice in. Are you with me? I have nothing else to rejoice in. Nothing of myself. But I rejoice in the cross. I rejoice in the empty tomb. I rejoice in the blood of Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed that? When you get to sing about the cross, get to singing about the blood, get to singing about the empty tomb, business picks up. Get somebody to stand up and brag on the Lord. Amen? Somebody brag, get up and not brag on how the devils beat them to death. And I, I want to say a lot of times we get up and brag uh, uh, or uh, basically tell what the devil's done. We're just, we're just bragging uh, uh, on what he's done and, and we're, we're actually telling on ourselves that we've let him do it. The devil's beat me to death. You're just telling on yourself you've let him. Going back to the saddle. Get that saddle off and you won't let him no more. He won't play, have no place to ride. You know, we've got grounds tonight. And when the devil tries to ride you, that's a, right there. Don't let, him, don't let him ride anymore. In the words of Barney Five, nip it. Nip it, nip it. We've been, we've let him drag us through the mud long enough. Amen. We've let him steal our joy. We've let him take our rejoicing away. Long enough. So we need to stop him and say, uh uh, not today, devil. Not today. I'm going to rejoice. Because this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad. You say, well, preacher, what, I, what am I glad? I, I've thought about this lately. 
I mean, most of you know what I'm dealing with. And in, in those days, that I, I, this flesh wants to feel sorry for itself. But every time that I maybe start to think that, I think, well, now wait a minute. It could be r- worse. I could still be fighting cancer. I could be undergoing chemotherapy or, uh, or radiation. I can always look around and see somebody in worse shape. And the night of Dad's uh, singing out here, I seen a man from North Carolina there, and he shared with me what he was going through. It was kind of similar, but it was worse. And buddy, God, God just, God just pierced my heart and said, "You know, I know it's tough, but it could be worse. And if this is the thorn that God chose for me." I'm going to take joy in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. It's what Paul, Paul th- pray, prayed three times for God to remove his thorn, but God didn't remove it. And I know all of us, we've got thorns in our flesh and we'd love to, hey, but if we don't get rid of them here, we're going to get rid of them there because this old body's going to go back to the dust of the earth. It can't go to heaven. It's been defiled with sin. But that glorified body, it'll never be sick again. And that glorified body's looking better all the time, ain't it? Amen. Amen. So let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. The Lord's with us. You've got the Lord. You've got all you need. You've got all you need. You don't need nothing else. We just need to rejoice. And now, I think about this. The more you rejoice, the more you'll be happy. Miss, Miss Lisa, she'd get up and she'd shout. Son, she'd shout the house down. And she wasn't shouting on emotions. Because pre- probably if she was running on emotions, she probably wouldn't even went to church. And if she was running on emotions, she probably wouldn't even been here that night. She was here. You're running on emotions, you're going to run out. Right? If Noah was running on emotions, he would have believed everybody 120 years he preached and said, well, he didn't even, it ain't raining, it ain't never going to rain. He'd probably just quit building if he was running on emotions. Am I making sense? I mean, if you're running on emotions, I mean, this, this thing's like a roller coaster. It, you, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, sometimes you're upside down and backwards in the Christian life, right? I mean, I can't run off of emotions. Now, don't, don't judge me here. Now, l- listen at me. Everybody look up here. Not even every day I really feel what you'd say, like I'm saved. You? But that's an emotion, right? That, 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 that does mean. I think about that song they sung, I Feel the Tug. Sometimes I don't feel like every day, like I'm, I'm swinging by the chandeliers. But you know what? That don't mean that I'm not saved. It's like that little boy that, in that song, I can feel the tug. He's flying a kite, and he lost sight of the kite in the clouds, dark clouds. Somebody know what dark clouds is? Couldn't see it. But he said, and he was holding on by you know, the thread, right? He said, I know my kite's still up there because I can still feel the tug. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, that, and, and not every day I would you say feel that tug from heaven, but every now and again I feel a tug from heaven. Amen. Amen. And when I seek Him, and just like that little analogy that I, I have I have felt or, or said before about fishing, I've fished before and got to lollygag and talk and eat and whatever and get slack on my line, and I couldn't feel what was in on the other end of the line. But when I drawed it up, I had a fish on. I could feel the bump, bump. It's the same way in our Christian life. Maybe because you ain't felt the bump, bump in a while. Maybe, hey, it's on your end. The drawing's on your end. He said, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh. That's a promise. Draw nigh to you. So pick up the slack, and maybe you can rejoice. Does that make sense? What reason... Why ain't you rejoicing? First of all, if you're lost, you can't rejoice because you ain't got no joy. <laughs> but if you're saved, 
You need to rejoice. Stir up the gift that's within you. I stir up by your pure minds by way of remembrance, the writer says. Amen? You know, fire, you ever, you ever had a, a campfire and, uh, and it'll go out? You know, and, and you think, well, ain't nothing there. I'm going to have to start it back over. But if you get to stirring it up just a little, lay a little kindling on it, it'll take right off. A lot of times, won't it? If it hadn't rained on it, right? I believe it's God's people. Man, the, the, the flame has flickered, but it's never went out. Amen? That's another primitive song. I'm a little fond. But, and the only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. Amen? I like that too. But a lot of times, in order to rejoice, we've got to be stirred up. I can't fall, I can't fall, or fire, you know what I'm saying. I, I'm from Buildine. I say far, F-A-R, far. It'll burn you. But you, you stir it up and it, you get a flame. Let a little kindling to it. Get stirred up. And I pray God stirred you up. And you let a little kindling on what, What's that kindling? Obedience. Let a little kindling of obedience. Not just go out and say, boy, boy that's a good message. Wish they was here to hear it. <laughs> You'd have got them tonight, preacher. That won't do you no good. Won't you? I believe the Lord stirred us out. Lord stirred me up. My cousin's life that she lived, it was hard. She lived a hard life. Her, her, uh, for the last several years, she's battled cancer. It's been hard. I mean, you take chemo and radiation, it makes you sick, don't it? And the, it brings on infections, it brings on other things. You're not only battling it physically, but you battle depression. Depression's real, right? Depression will take your joy. It'll cause you not to rejoice. But I pray the Lord has stirred us all up tonight. And that we'll lay a little kindling on it again, that we may flame for the Lord. Be on fire for Him. A little kindling of obedience and say, Lord, that's for me. That was for me, Lord. I needed that. And Lord, I'm, I'm heeding to your word. I, I'm not just going to be a hearer of the word. I want to be a doer. I want to let a little kindling of obedience on there. And then take a good uh, night stick of the, of the word of God. See, man, get you a good Bible verse and stand on it. That's a good night stick right there. Amen. It'll burn, won't it? That's right. That's the message. Every head bowed and every eye closed tonight as the Lord speaks. I believe we all need to think about our, our praise. And our, if you're breathing, you need to be rejoicing. You need to give Him praise. And I believe we're all Behind on a praising, ain't we? Like that song Brother Terry, Daddy used to sing. Terry sang it too. Uh, checking up on my payments, you know. Well, if we're behind on, on our payments. We're behind on a rejoicing in the Lord, ain't we? We really are. Do we murmur more than we rejoice? Do we complain more than we're rejoicing? I do sometimes. I'll be honest with you, I do. Shamely to say, then the Holy Ghost says, hey, I've been better than you than that. Better to you than that. You know when he reminds me of that more is when I see somebody in worse shape than I am, I think, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me that I'm complaining. I mean, I, I, there was a man, there was a man over at that revival. He was a blind man. And he, he he lost his sight 20 years ago. That man is so happy. That man is rejoicing in the Lord. And buddy, God got a hold of me that night. He said, you got two good eyes. There's a little girl born with spinal, diff, uh, uh, spinal diffia. How, how you say that? I, don't, I ain't saying it right. You know what I'm talking about. 
She's in a wheelchair. She's got a smile on her face. Every night over there, she's just a jolly and laughing. And I said, you, you've got a good spine. You, you're able to walk. You can always look around. Sometimes it's good to be reminded, ain't it, that we need to rejoice and be glad. Be glad. It says, enter into his courts with praise. I believe we need to go to church being glad. I, I think about what David said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Was you glad to come to church tonight? Said, yeah, man. We didn't have to come to church tonight, but we got to come to church tonight. It's a privilege. I've seen people on their deathbed say this to me. Preacher, I wished I was a lot more faithful than I was. I let a whole lot of things. I gave an excuse. I had a whole lot of things just give me an excuse not to come. When I should have come. Should have come on anyway. Regret's hard to live with. But I, let me say, you can't go back and redo yesterday, but you can do something about right now. Because now's the day, now's the accepted time. Ain't it? If you're lost tonight and you don't know Jesus, you can't go back and redo yesterday. If money could buy back time, we'd all be broke. Whoop me now. We'd all be broke. But you can't buy back time, but you can get it under the blood. You can get it forgiven of. Amen. Anyone feel the need to come and pray tonight? All right, let's all pray together. Lord, as we come before you, God, we thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for the challenge. Lord, and I just pray tonight, God, that you'd help us to rejoice. Help us, Lord, to rejoice. Rejoice, as Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. That means in a good time and in a bad Help us to rejoice. God, we have nothing to brag on ourselves about, but we have everything to brag on you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.